Hi, I'm Moira Casey. I'm curator of exhibits at the Littleton Museum. Thanks for joining us today. We are doing our virtual family program. Um, since we are um, not able to do in-person events yet, we were hoping you would join us for a program on a family program on crafting. This one goes in line with our current exhibit. It's called Colorado Abstracted, Five Artists Capture the Transcendental Experience of Nature. And it's on display through February 27th. So um, today we are going to, um, we were lucky enough to have three of the artists here with us today and I'll introduce them in just a moment. Um, but we're going to uh, show you how you can do this project at home. Um, I've got some supplies here that I'll go through that you should have around the house, so it should be a pretty easy thing to gather up um, if you want to use your own supplies. We also um, have an exhibit page if you go to littletongov.org backslash museum um, and navigate uh, to exhibits on the left navigation. In the drop down you'll see the Colorado Abstracted page and uh, you can get the supply list there um, or you can also just uh, email to sign up and come pick up a packet of supplies that we will provide to you at the museum. We'll have limited supplies for people to come pick up. Um, so go to the website for that information. Um, but basically the project today is how to make a collage, um, a Colorado inspired collage uh, with abstract methods and the artists will go over their specific methods and how they like to do it and what supplies they like to use. But just to give you an idea of what you'll need to get started, you'll need some sort of a sturdy backboard. Um, some cardboard would work. If you happen to have mat board, we have lots of this on hand at the museum. You could use mat board, um, any cardstock, just heavier paper um, or cardboard that you can find. Um, lots of magazines, recycled materials, anything like this, books that you're gonna be discarding. Um, you could even use paper bags. And then just some glue sticks and pencils or markers if you plan on doing some drawing um, to add to the collage. Um, and basically all you're gonna do, you need good scissors too, which I realize I don't have, but good scissors. You can also just tear things out of um, the magazines or whatever paper source you're using, um, but scissors would help you cut out specific shapes, um, which the artist again will show you here to do, how to do that here in a minute. Um, so scissors, any type of glue, glue stick, um, or Elmer's glue, and I think that's pretty much it. So we'll introduce you to the artists and get started. So the artists here today, all three of them are in the show Colorado Abstracted, and we have Patricia J. Finley, and then over here we have Janet Rehnquist, and then on the far side we have Lydia Regal, um, and there are two other artists in the show as well, um, but these three have um, decided to come here today and help us out by demonstrating this particular collage project. I started out in the art business doing collage and I brought my very first collage I ever did today. And here it is. It's made up of simple shapes and figures cut from magazines that a friend of mine just had laying around. It's amazing what you do when you frame things up, you know, mat it and frame it, it looks a whole lot different. So I did that for kind of a long time. And what I did were things like this. I took, this is one I pulled together this weekend. I pulled out a picture from Lux Magazine. They have really good paper, I love Lux. And another picture from a different magazine. And I put it together with some roses. I wanted to cover up the writing on this. Here's the piece, and then you just glue it. I brought Elmer's glue, you can use any kind of glue to glue it down, which I'll do in a minute. But I want to explain some of the things you can use. If you're telling yourself that you can't do this, you don't know how to do art wrong, you can. You just take magazines, Lux is good, like I said, El Decor, Architectural Digest, I'll have nice, thick uh, paper and beautiful pictures. And you start pulling things out, uh, I pull out complete pages and then I cut out some of them until something sort of gels to fit together and look kind of nice. If you decide you want straight lines, you can get paper of all sorts and all colors at any arts and crafts supply place, any uh, artist supply place like Meiniger's. You can even get paper online, I'm pretty sure. And I like to do um, my collages on, this is called canvas board. It's kind of a stiff cardboard board, cardboard with uh, 
um, white canvas on top. It makes a nice outline. You can also, if you think you can't draw a circle, you can buy things that will help you make circles. Like this one is an oval with this little thing that spins around. Ruler, also critical. Exacto knife, critical. Scissors. All you do to glue it down is, I just brought Elmer's glue because that's what I have for crafts with my granddaughter. But any kind of glue will do. And you glue around the edges or in the middle, depending on how big your piece is. I like to use tweezers to pick them up because I don't like glue all over my hands. You put it on the paper and you put on the other pieces on top of it. Just glue around whatever you think is appropriate just to make it stick down. And what you want to do always is cover up the writing on anything you've got going because you don't want, obviously, uh, whatever it said about the artist who made this piece on here. And voila, you have a completed piece of art. Pretty simple, or at least it sounds simple. The hard part is deciding what you want to make. Always the hard part. When I got done doing this, I wanted to change things up. And oh, let me show you some of my other pieces that I did in this total series. I did this, which is, these are pieces all cut out. This is a piece of material that I put mat around, a mat board. Here's one I cut out of blue paper that I really liked. This is an advertisement for um, a high-end refrigerator. It's pictures of fish, believe it or not. Kind of pretty. And then I moved on to lines and circles and graphic stuff. Here's one of the ones I did. This particular piece has resin on top of it. But it's, you can see it's lines or circles. One of the things that's on here is one of those leaves you can get at Michael's. Um, I don't know how they do this, but they take a leaf and they somehow get rid of everything but the skeleton. It's very pretty, as well as lines and more lines. And I made a bunch of these and sold a bunch. Here are some of them. This one is three pounds of brown paper. This is material that I glued on together with lines. This one is more op art. I bought a book that was copyright free, so you could make copies. I copyrighted or copied on my uh, copier just this particular circle, cut it out, and added it to this piece. Here's one of my favorite ones, in large part because it used up some old earrings of which I had only one of. This is an earring and this is an earring. Um, I just glued them on on top of a collaged piece. I made this paper. Um, I didn't make the paper itself, I made the color on the paper. All I did was I took rice paper, which you can get at any art supply store or again, craft store. And I made it, I colored it. And then I glued it onto the this one uh, as the background and then glue whatever design I wanted on top. And people seem to like them. I like them. So that's, those are some of your options on collage. Anything that you need, you can find in craft stores. Like I said, the X-Acto, the ruler, these circle things. They have uh, hole punches. I used to have probably 20 or 30 hole punches of various kinds and sizes uh, to punch nice, clean holes to put on collages. It's super fun. It's a great way to uh, exercise your brain, use the other side of your brain, and have some fun, some nice, cold, dreary winter afternoon. If you're new to the collage work, um, it's fun to have inspiration. If you look at this, is just a piece out of a magazine. I think it's El Decor. But look at the very simple shapes and lines. And this uh, young woman's, she makes rugs in these same sh simple shapes and lines. That's something you could easily do with collage with paper just from Michaels. And if you need further inspiration, we have some local artists who are really wonderful collage artists and do this for a living. Janice McDonald is one. Doug Hosner, who's with Walker Fine Art, the gallery I'm with, uh, is another. They do beautiful things. So you can go see other people's collage work 
and realize the possibilities. Thank you. Well, I am a cold wax and oil painter and um, not really a collage artist. I only do it occasionally when I, I need some meditative moments or I just need to break away from what I'm doing and want to do something else. So I will keep a variety of, of um, supplies around to do this. Um, in particular, this Christmas, I was kind of overwhelmed with everything I had to do with Christmas and um, not really into doing my painting. So I um, thought I would cheer everybody up in this time of COVID with a little bit of humor with this little uh, piece right here. Um, and boy, did I procrastinate doing anything for Christmas at the time <laughs> because I, this took so much of my time. It took days and days of, of tearing out teeny tiny little pieces of paper. But it was a great way to spend, spend a day or several. Um, I like, I prefer to really just tear my paper. Occasionally, occasionally I'll use um, some scissors, but, um, but I do like, uh, most of my work is um, derived from nature and my ideas are, come from nature. So I'll, I tend to gravitate toward natural things. So I've got some turkey feathers that I found one time. Um, I, I take just whatever paper I'll find and I'll, um, I'll paint it myself. I'll, I find um, cardboard and I'll tear that, around, tear that up. Um, as well as a lot of, uh, from magazines, just like Pat. Um, I, I, I keep whatever I have this is some old, old handmade paper that I kept around, so, and I love tearing it. Um, so, most of my work, like I said, is derived from nature, and um, that's what I'll be working on today. Well, in, in this piece, um, it, it, it obviously has the landscape. I wanted to bring in the interior um, into it you know, gradually working your way outside where I ab absolutely love to be. Um, I used gradations of grays for this trail leading you back into the mountains. Um, put in a little log cabin and then just a little bit of pe some humor in here with this little guy. Looked like he should be in Hawaii somewhere. Um, a little bit out of place. I like irony and controversy in my, um, in my artwork, so this is kind of a fun thing to do. So this is some paper that I um, had in my studio and I painted, but I just wanted to show you that um, how interesting the, the paper can be if you, when you tear it, if you let some of the edges show like this. So what I do is I'll, I'll, this is fairly thick paper, but I'll fold it a few times like this. And it takes a little practice to make sure that you're tearing it so that the, this white area will show um, underneath. That it, uh, it gives it a very organic look. And I try to keep my paintings pretty organic looking as well as I continue on with my collages that way. So very much of a natural look like that. You can see the difference between the areas that I, that I tore and didn't. I've um, torn my background piece out. I've torn some, some of these. I'm not sure if I'll use them as of yet. They came out of a magazine. This is some of my, uh, just some paper that I've had around. We're trying to keep with the Littleton theme, the Littleton Historical Museum. I'm wondering if this feather can act as 
sort of be grass, feel like grass in here, or perhaps a tree. Just kind of working this out. Cut out this funky little cabin that would represent the cabin that's here outside. Or perhaps I could just use some, make it very simple and use some cardboard to represent that. Or maybe both. It's, um, possible fence posts. Hate to be too literal, but, uh, Kind of fun. I think it needs maybe a little color in through here, so. See, now I did that wrong because I'd like for the white to show. So the way I have to, have to be kind of deliberate in the way that I tear. Does need the cardboard. Does it need the house? It's just a completely different look. This makes it much more literal. Take that away and you can think about it more. What, what's the, what am I trying to say here? Here's another one I cut out, which might be just thought it needed a little more color here. This could represent the hay that's, that's um, bound up when it's baled. It could be more of a sun. It could be just an, an art type element added to that. I'll play with it some more and see. Hello, my name is Lydia Regal and uh, I am part of the art activity for the Colorado Abstracted Show and I would like to show you my process which differs slightly from uh, my friend and fellow artists. Um, mine is more intuitive. I use um, torn paper and I like, uh, I like things with texture in them so my paper is thin it can be scrunched up when I put it on a board and usually this is matte board and I sometimes like a colored background so I use utilize that and I will put this on there it will go off the edges um, outside we're in one of the activity rooms at the Littleton Museum and it's this gorgeous view outside of the trees the water the fence outside so I I'm going to try to replicate my interpretation of what we see outside. Um, there are gorgeous tree barks, 
this might be part of that. Um, here's some freeform lines that can be used for water or you know whatever uh, I get there. Uh, this is gold paper and it's actually just envelopes. So what you see is cut out magazines, um, letters that come in the mail that I think are sort of interesting and you know artists we try to utilize everything that we have. I use a glue stick, sometimes I use gel medium which is um, can be used as a glue in acrylic work. Um, I think sometimes the image sort of is enhanced by using either markers or pencils. So graphite, uh, sometimes you want to emphasize a little bit of something. Um, since I'm going to do landscape, sometimes the spatial quality, uh, there's a path that runs along here. I'm going to try to include that. There are a lot of times you're after space, you know, spatial quality to your work because even though it's abstract, uh, this is your in interpretation of what is outside, and sometimes it needs um, some enhancements actually to make your eye move back. So you might tear the paper in a diagonal way, showing uh, a direction. Uh, sometimes it is also through the values, so perhaps you have darker, darker values down here, lighter values up here, uh, it is way okay to uh, go off the paper. Um, so I, on, when I, I did this outside, these are clouds. It extends off the paper. There were uh, sort of fields. And so this was sort of a fun uh, textural element. So I use all of those things. I think that um, why we chose this activity is the supplies are fairly easy to obtain. They're probably in your house as well. And it's so great fun. And, you know, it all, uh, it's sort of freeing and it's really fun. Uh, try it. And perhaps you don't like the first one, but the second or the third one might even be better. So you can, um, I uh, took a workshop from Megan Wilbar and so she uses these as preparatory uh, exercises for painting large paintings. I don't use it quite that same way, uh, but I value the looseness and the textural element of what this is. I hope you enjoy it. Just as an, another example, I customarily use very loose, torn paper that is textural that goes off the edges and then I put that, I can mount that on a map board. My daughter did this one. Her name is Kate. And what she did is she drew a tree. So this is another way that you can accomplish this collage exercise. So she cut out leaves, she drew in a tree, and then she, she inlaid all of the textural small pieces uh, of work to accomplish a different way. So now we've seen four different ways uh, that you can have fun uh, and that you can do at home. This paper, there's so many twigs outside and branches um, from what I'm looking out at. 
So I'm trying to find some paper that will represent that. And, uh, you know, maybe it's the function of having a very abstract piece um, to do that. I think you try it. Um, if you don't like it, you we just won't use it. So, um, Sometimes this uh, rice paper just tears in a really especially nice way and then there's one coloration on one side and then sort of the negative image on the other. But it really, these really wonderful kind of uh, ragged corners. Um, and then you can just use smaller pieces as well. Um, I see, what I see when I look out is the lake, there are trees, uh, there is a fence. There is uh, the ice of the lake, and then you can see all the way back. And so I think that is especially uh, nice from where we're standing. So, um, that's what I see. Um, I've just cut, uh, I, this is a magazine, here's some dark coloration. So when I look out and why I'm doing this is I want to give it a sort of a three-dimensional. There, I have trees out there, trees around. There is a light uh, source on the one side of the tree and then there is darkness on the other. So to make it look more round, I am going to put a dark strip on the back side of those trees. Not all, not on every one of them, but um, it just allows um, us to have the eye travel. And so when we put it down together, um, hopefully that's what it look like. And sometimes I lay it out first, but then um, I think it's always good to just layer. So that's why I like uh, tissue paper sometimes, uh, just because you can layer it, layer it, layer it, and uh, you get this really lush kind of textural piece. So. I think I will start gluing stuff down because uh, I think it needs it. So. This, is down. this is the path. Uh, that is what I'm doing right now. And it's just simply having it. I folded this rice paper in a couple different ways, uh, scrunched it up uh, because I want what I see out there is smooth concrete, but um, I want to show that it is a path. I think this is a, a, a start of what I see out there. Um, I think you can go further, um, but I think this sort of gives you the idea that there is a line of evergreens out there. There is ice, which is, I've tried to represent here. Here's the path that is outside. Here's this wonderful winter grass that is a really light in color. Um, there are, I need another tree. Uh, that's what I see. So I will add another tree before I'm done. I think that you can also use uh, crayons. I think you can use watercolors, or if you have acrylics, you can fill it in um, where you think it needs it. I think that there is just open to so many possibilities. You know, I, I think having, what I think would be really nice is if I had, um, I, I think that having, Sometimes a hard line helps center the eye. So we have a fence out here um, that I think would 
benefit um, from, from being around the trees. So you could um, paste that in if you don't like it. You could just simply take it out. But when I look out, the fence goes around the trees. so it's shorter still. So what that has done, uh, it has shown that there is a fence right in front of us. And so we were looking through the activity room into the lake outside. So thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you'll find some time and the supplies needed to um, complete this project at home. Um, I wanna send a special thank you to um, the artists who were able to join us today. There are five women artists in this exhibit, but um, in particular the ones that came today, Janet Rundquist, um, Lydia Regal, and Patricia J. Finley. We really appreciate their time um, and expertise in showing us how to make this fun collage. Um, again, visit the website littletongov.org backslash museum, exhibits um, Colorado Abstracted, and we look forward to seeing how it turns out for you. You can tag us on social media, Facebook or Instagram, if you want to post a picture of your completed project and tag it hashtag Colorado Abstracted. That would be wonderful. Thank you.